What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Uh, it is the Earthmaster here with an update video on this Sunday night, January 8th, 2023. It's about 7.40 p.m. here along the West Coast in California, where we're set to receive a, a whole bunch of rainfall again tonight and tomorrow. So uh, not too much time to dry out in between storms. Uh, all of next week here looks pretty wet. And uh, just keeping an eye on the river and um, had a lot of flooding around here around the Chico area. Uh, throughout the night last night and some power outages but uh, power is on for now we'll continue to watch it we are expecting a high wind event again tonight with more wind and rain so we'll uh, hopefully the stream will stay up all right latest earthquake shows a 2.0 into the region of the uh, big island of hawaii it looks like all right let's go ahead and glance at the usgs map here where there's a little activity kicking up here along the west coast right now 2.1 coming in near uh, the Morgan Hill area. Now, the magnitude map here, I want to bring up the uh, just 2.5 and above. Not a whole lot popping off here. Just uh, looks like only uh, that 2.7 up in the geysers area. The majority of the activity throughout the West Coast, all microquakes. And no major swarms to take note of, which is uh, rather odd. I find it really, really odd with all this rainfall that we're not really seeing any type of earthquake activity. But then again, it does take a little while to get down there into those fault systems. And uh, Pacific Northwest, quiet. Nothing going on up here at all. Um, it is the weekend. They tend to only point uh, report 2.5 and above, uh, and that's the USGS. So uh, I do want to check out the trimmer map tonight and see what's going on. Uh, 300 epicenters of trimmer into the Vancouver Island range is there. Uh, it's been like that. Uh, well, this is about the higher number we've seen in the past few days, but the location of the trimmer has been confined to the northern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. All right, uh, rest of the states here, fairly quiet. One odd earthquake southeast of San Antonio near the Falls City, Texas area. 3.4 coming in here into, what do you see here, guys? What do you... What do you see out here? Oil fields galore. And that's that's just what's written on the map. A real quick glance here of the satellite imagery. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about a lot of them. Uh, in fact, it looks like there's one right next to this uh, epicenter, potentially. Hard to tell sometimes, but uh, for the most part, they're going to look like these little uh, white roads that come out to uh, uh, some tanks and some oil pumping operations and wastewater disposal wells. And there's lots of them. There's hundreds and thousands of them out there in the uh, beautiful state of texas where that earthquake struck today eastern portion of the country quiet uh throughout the south america region we've got a couple earthquakes coming in uh, in the afternoon time period magic number is four some low grade fours kicking off also an earthquake here into the east pacific rise uh, that one coming in yesterday it looks like um Let's see what we got for the big island. Any new activity kicking off here? Kilauea Volcano still showing some activity. And um, the Pahala area, of course, very typical down here in this region that sees some swarm on uh, swarms pretty much on any given day. Alaska, about the same as well. Um, no further westward movement here across the Pacific Plate. Uh, one earthquake in the North Korea region. Uh, looks like that was a 3.6, a little older one, it looks like, from this morning. But uh, notice no white rings up here on the western Pacific, indicating, well, no newer earthquake activity. Majority of the earthquake activity, as expected, following the 7.0 earlier this morning, is westward here across the Java Trench and the Indonesia area, Papua New Guinea as well. These are all threes and fours, but we do got to watch for some potential larger scale movement with that shift in pressure. Uh, over here from that 7.0 in the Vanuatu area this morning. As uh, far as any newer movement goes into the area, most of this has been uh, aftershock activity following that 7.0. Uh, we have seen, looks like there was a 4.6, uh, about 500 kilometers deep after the 7-pointer. Um, and also another 4.4 in this region. So westward pressure movement, definitely seen some adjustment, not only west, but east here. Uh, when we do get uh, some major scale, large scale activity like that, uh, there's many different scenarios and regions that it affects as far as the pressure movement goes. 
And uh, deeper activity continuing here with only minimal, I haven't really seen any surface rupture up here along the Tonga Trench or, or the uh, Kermadec Trench uh, up into these locked areas. Down here into the South Island, New Zealand area, one earthquake from last night. That's at 4.5. Um, over here into the Albania area, 4.1 coming in. All right, uh, space weather activity is kind of a big deal right now. We're watching a regional sunspot named 3182. Uh, it does harbor some potential for some strong flares, including X flare probability. Looks like a 30% chance for an X flare potential um, from a couple of these sunspots. The main one, of course, is going to be 3182. 99% uh, chance for a C flare, M flare around 70. Proton event due to the location and vicinity of the earth, of these Earth facing uh, sunspots here that could provide a little proton event. Depending, we get uh, some flaring going on. Let me check out the most recent uh, imagery here. Yeah, this sunspot here is definitely grown as well. But 3182, I think, harbors the most complex magnetic structure that there is, and that does you know put up the threat for an X flare probability. Uh, 3182 does harbor a beta gamma delta class, which harbors some of the strongest flares there. So overall threat looks like 20% chance specifically from that uh, sunspot. Uh, no major um, solar weather events expected far as the, the aurora forecast goes. Looks minimal. But should we get a massive uh, X flare with a subsequent CME or directed, that would change uh, fairly drastically. But conditions are calm now. Uh, but looking at the solar flare chart does show um, we're crackling here with some C flares, even some M flares here, here over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Most recent one in M 1.0, it looks like, um, earlier today. So we'll continue to monitor that and definitely keep an eye on it. All right, so weather activity, folks. We have a, a lot of rainfall coming in here to the west coast once again. Uh, I do want to go over just a little couple map, a few maps here. Our next storm is knocking on the door uh, here in California and um, not really giving us much time to dry out in between these systems. So uh, this time, though, Southern California is going to get a pretty good brunt of moisture. Uh, look at these impressive rainfall rates along the coast, right on the San Andreas Fault. Uh, and areas, looks like around Mammoth Lakes, area these guys are going to get hammered with some snow many many feet of snow up there uh into that area of cam of uh i was going to say klamath falls but california and uh that kind of moves on and then we got another system coming in right behind it uh but for us here in northern california we got some more wind we got some more rain coming in um so we'll continue to you know roll with these storm punches which is fine with me because they come in one right after another I was out checking out some flooding today and uh, seen quite a bit of it here locally. The rivers out here, um, let me see, where's the uh, river map? Here's the, uh, the forecasted map here from the California Nevada River Forecast Center. Now, there's some areas around the Sacramento River, and that's going to be our main river here in Northern California. Runs north to south, uh, and then, of course, goes out through the, um, the delta, which is further down here and um eventually goes out to the ocean i know it's a waste of water but there's i i don't know the whole story behind it but uh it's a waste i think anyway um there's some areas here around the hamilton city area chico area in northern california that is expected to reach into the uh flood stage here it looks like potentially on tuesday around 3 or 4 a.m uh, 142 feet and now, again, that is into the uh, flood. Looks like, well, kind of looks like maybe the monitor stage here. This did get dropped down slightly. Uh, let me see. Flood stage. Let's see here. It doesn't look like... Yeah, it looks like we're into the monitor stage. Very close to flood stage, though. Uh, I know when we checked this yesterday or the day before, uh, this definitely had us well into... The flood stage area so this is all subject to change this is just a forecast uh, but i was over there checking out the river today uh, in a couple different regions and they're very high very very high uh, and with all the rainfall we're expecting tonight uh, and uh, tomorrow then uh, those could definitely change 
little experimental river forecast uh, deal. Uh, Lake Oroville currently is at 735 feet. It has gone up since about, oh, let's see, since about December, December 2nd or so, we were at about 660 feet. So um, literally almost, almost 100 feet. Uh, that this lake has risen, Lake Oroville. And it was really low. Um, 2022 is listed up here as well. Hopefully we go above that level. Um, and I'd love to see some of these uh, recreational lakes full again. It would be awesome. Um, it looks like it is 165 feet below the pool, uh, the full pool of 900 feet. So we got a ways to go uh, before we start having any, any concerns of that specific lake there. This is the current drought map, supposedly. Um, this is probably, when was this updated? January 3rd. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> In the past five days, we have received a lot of rainfall. So that's going to make a, uh, a fairly good positive impression in removing a lot of this drought here throughout California. And of course, got more rainfall tonight and over the next week. So I wouldn't doubt it if we see possibly, possibly, uh, this entire picture change to uh, no drought. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that and uh, see how this plays out. Uh, let's see what else is there. Um, let's go over here to the windy map here real quick and see what we got. Uh, for some potential rainfall. There's our next system sitting offshore. It's a little disorganized, but it's starting to form. And uh, we've got some pretty good wind gusts out there with it as well. Out into the ocean. Um, looks like, well, I'm sure there's probably a little bit higher gusts out there. About 72 mile per hour wind gusts with this uh, center of low pressure system and a couple different areas here that are trying to develop. But either way, that's coming in tonight. Uh, about one o'clock in the morning, it starts to really hit California and it looks like here into the five o'clock time frame is when the brunt of the wind's going to kick in. Now, us here around Chico, we're in a little bit of a lower level of wind, which is fine by me because I don't want the power going off. Uh, it went off several times last night. Uh, it looks like potentially maybe 27 mile per hour, 33 mile per hour gusts, which is a little bit less than what's going on around Sacramento area. And, of course, areas around the Bay region where they're seeing 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So that's fine with me. Uh, but we are going to get some expected rain uh, accumulation here over the next three days. It looks like into the uh, Bay Area, probably more than two inches. Let me see what we got here around the Chico area, potentially. Uh, upwards of about two inches here. The next five days still add some more onto that level. Uh, and next 10 days even more and this has just been an ongoing pattern here for northern california and there's not a whole lot of uh, forecast of it potentially dying down uh, anytime soon let me check out the <clears throat> models here uh, let's go back over here to the regions and <coughs> excuse me i want to check out and see what we have here for the uh, pressure differences Right now we got low pressure system here and this goes out a, a little ways uh, as long as this blue is here those are low pressure systems ridging of high pressure indicating some warmer air drier air into the uh, plain states and just want to see what's going on here on the extended forecast i uh, got high pressure building off here to the east and that could push the storm door uh, for california further west out into the pacific uh, but it doesn't last long. Uh, high pressure gets scooted out of the way. And for the folks there in the uh, plains, um, their winter is not really wintry. Uh, but we got the low pressure system hitting the west coast again. And this is about the January 19th time frame where we get a high pressure. And I don't like these because this is where we get the drier weather. I know. I, I don't want the rain to stop. I, I'm enjoying it. But these high pressure systems that form off the west coast here uh, puts us back into that ridge pattern, which is dry. It brings down the colder air from Canada uh, into the states, and that's where winter begins. Um, so that's around the, looks like that takes place around the 20th time frame. West coast dries out a little bit. 
winter returns to the um, Midwest area, Plain States, and the uh, majority of the eastern portion of the country. And that's about the 24th. So we'll see how this plays out. Either way, I know we got quite a few storms here to deal with up until that time frame here in Northern California. And, uh, you know, maybe we could use a little break. Uh, we still have February and March, which is some of our uh, wet months. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll dry out for a little while. But I hope that I don't want that to be as far as the rainfall goes. And we definitely need more. Um, we're off to a good start so far for this season. Alrighty, guys. I think that is about it for now. Um, again, stay safe out there. And the X flare, I'm, I'm just really surprised we haven't seen any X flare uh, kicking off recently. Earth directed uh, from this sunspot. Let me, let me look at it again, see what we got. I think it's coming. Maybe it's just waiting for it to be directly lined up uh, towards the Earth. And then uh, it's going to light off in, uh, in X flare. Good probability 3182 would be the uh, culprit. All right, folks. We'll uh, catch you guys sometime tomorrow. Again, if the stream goes down, it uh, will probably stay down until I can uh, be 100% um, certain that the wind event will die down. Again, 35 miles per hour. That's probably not going to bring any uh, power lines down, but you never know. Everything's soaked and soggy out here. Uh, so trees falling over and all sorts of fun stuff. Power lines arcing last night. <laughs> so I did key up here. The stream may go down. High winds here. Um, expected. Just FYI. Let's see if we left anything out here. I know we got a lot of activity over here around the Mediterranean region. Seen a 4.1. Quite a few threes in there as well. There's a big, huge seismic gap in between what's going on over here around the Java Trench and this area. Uh, but then again, um, last week we've seen quite a bit of activity here through northern India, Himalayas, all throughout eastern Afghanistan. Um, so definitely looks like that westward pressure movement uh, is trying to make its way uh, into this area. New Zealand quiet though, very quiet down there. All right, guys. Have a good day. Stay safe out there, and we'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Peace out.